What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. Today, I wanted to talk about pain. You know, I heard a few people's testimonies, and it kind of made me reflect on different things. And this was just online, and I realized, you know, more and more how sometimes people are going through a lot of tragedies and bad things. And so I wanted to kind of um, talk about that. I think, um, you know, I wanted to share some of the things that I think I've gathered from the Bible about how we can avoid pain and how we can live a better life. Um, You know, there are a few examples of bad things happening to people in the Bible. Uh, The two people that come to mind are Job and Jesus. Now, when Jesus was actually on earth, you know, we're not told necessarily that he had a horrible life. Now, I have heard some suggestions that you know he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and so I'm not necessarily hinting at Jesus was you know pain free throughout his whole life outside of the cross but you know I do want to touch on that you know Jesus is a person that is acquainted with sorrow and suffering. Job was another person that is described in the Bible that went through different tragedies. You know, um, some of the biggest tragedies I think I hear people talking about is something like sexual abuse, Uh, Something like a loved one dying, um, maybe divorce, and then things like drugs and alcohol and them being addicted to it and that causing problems. And so um, I think some of the biggest examples of what we should do to avoid pain uh, is one in the book of Deuteronomy and um, you know I like this verse because you know God is addressing um, a lot in this verse about life and so he says oh that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever and this is Deuteronomy 5:29 and so um you know to me that is a huge bible verse that addresses our life You know, that says that, you know, hey, things will go well for you if you fear God and keep his commandments always. And so I think some of the problems that we run into in life is because of a lack of doing those two things, um, which is fearing God and keeping his commandments. You know, the fear of the Lord is what the Bible in the book of Proverbs calls, um, you know, a hate of evil. It's a respect of God, but the definition of it, when the Bible gives the definition of the fear of the Lord, it, it says it is to hate evil. And so I think in our life, you know, we're all sinners. So at some point, we don't have a choice in participating in some form of evil but we I think one of the first answers I'm going to give is 
you have to turn away from evil. I think that that's one of the biggest things that we need to do in our life. Now, evil isn't necessarily, you know, the only reason why bad things happen to someone. You know, Job is a great example of someone, even though he was a sinner, but he lived blamelessly and yet bad things still happen to him. So you are not necessarily a person who, you know, you may not have done anything for that pain to come on you. But, you know, what the Bible seems to explain is that, you know, when we fear God and keep his commandments always, that it will be well with us and with our children. And I think that when we are neglecting doing those things, it opens up the door for Satan to come in and wreak destruction and havoc in our life. And so, um, you know, Jesus himself, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So I've thought about that for a little bit. And, you know, what he seems to say is that, you know, because he has overcome the world, a lot of the tribulations that we could have are not going to come to us. It doesn't necessarily... I I take it to mean that we will go through tribulations. But I also take it to mean that because Jesus said he overcame the world, that certain tribulations are not going to happen to you. And so I think anyone listening to this, you know, I think you need to realize what role does Jesus play in your life and trying your best to open up your heart to Jesus Christ which is hard to do you know I know that sometimes our heart can go to I'm going to blame God for this and I don't want anything to do with God because you feel that God is the one causing the problem and I know in my life, certain times I felt that doing good was the reason why I was going through different problems. And I think that may be a common uh, misconception is that, you know, if I do any type of good for a long period of time, that evil will happen to me. Now... You know, I think that's the gist of sometimes what people get from the Bible is like, oh, you know, I don't want anything to do with the Bible because, you know, look at all the bad that's happened to people in the Bible, which I don't think is fully true. You know, that's not a a correct answer. And plus, bad things happen to all people. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a Christian or not. You know, and all people die. We just, you know, hope that, you know, the way that we die is, you know, a somewhat good way. But all people die unless the rapture happens. So, you know, to me, I think there are a few things that we can do to try to avoid pain. I think one thing is analyzing why we got into that pain in the first place. You know, I think we have to analyze our decisions. I think we have to analyze, you know, the choices that we're making. We may feel like, no, I didn't do anything to bring on this trouble. But, you know, sometimes it can be the environment that you're in. You know, if you got in a bar fight and you know, people jumped to you, you know, well, why were you hanging out at the bar? Why were you, you know, getting drunk and careless with the way that you acted? You know, I think I'm trying to make the point that we have to eliminate 
those things that are causing us problems on purpose. You know, eliminate all those causes. Jesus briefly addressed why tragedies happened uh, in that, you know, when the Tower of Siloam fell on people and people asked Jesus, hey, why did this happen? And Jesus said, hey, if you don't repent, you will all likewise perish. And so Jesus brought to light that we have to repent of things that we have done. Otherwise, there's a judgment that is over our head. And so I think that's one of the key things that we have to do is that even though all people sin... God wants us to turn away from those sins that we have all committed, irregardless of, you know, whether it was your fault or, you know, you just, you know, were tempted and, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, Jesus is saying to all people that we have to come out of that darkness and it's hard to see, you know. But I think the first step is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Accepting Jesus, believing in Jesus. And as you continue to believe, I think the Holy Spirit and God himself starts to work on bringing you out of different problems. Yeah, you know, I can make a list of, you know, yeah, we got to fear God, keep his commandments. And, you know, we have to, you know read the Bible more and, you know, uh, start doing good and, you know, all those different things, I think are kind of an easy way to put it. And, you know, we can check off a box, check, check a list, you know, check certain things off a list. But at the same time, you know, I think that God starts working in you know our life and I think it's Jesus Christ who brings us out of evil and brings us out of you know certain bad behaviors um you know I don't know if there is an exact answer for every single situation because I just don't know it you know I've only heard so many stories I've only talked to so many people so I don't know if there is a specific answer that someone can give you other than when you sit down with a Christian counselor who you know is you know has good reviews you know has um the track record has references, maybe, you know, um, sitting down with a pastor who also has good reviews, has a good track record. You know, you don't want to sit down with a wolf or you don't want to sit down with someone who's not going to really help you because, you know, they're going to lead you down the wrong path. But, at the same time, you know, I will say that, you know, I think one of the biggest answers that I found was opening my heart to advice, open my heart to a better way. And that's when I really started to see change. And it wasn't necessarily, like I said, it wasn't necessarily um, my individual choices. You know, I think God is opening up his hand to say, you know, hey, you guys can come to me if you just ask. If you start with prayer, start with believing, you know, um, I think when we start with 
opening up our heart to God, he can see that, you know. But if we are hard hearted towards God and we don't even care about following God in the right way or we don't even care about, you know, living according to what God's will is, then, you know, I think that brings more problems. And so I think there's a few things that we can learn to do. Um, I'll try to kind of go over this. I have a lot of um, other, not maybe not a whole bunch, but I have some videos covering different topics on my website, uh, washi.com, W-A-S-H-Y-E.com. Um, and there's a tab at the top of the page called problems. And I try to address certain problems. Um, and you know, I, I feel like I try to cover some of the basic kind of issues that people can deal with. And, um, you know, anyway, so back to Deuteronomy 529, you know, there's a scripture that says that when things, when we fear God and keep his commandments, you know, it's, I look at it as a promise. You know, I look at it as a promise from God that says, you know, if you do these things that it will go well. You know, it doesn't mean that you won't necessarily have a problem, but it means that God can be with you in that problem. And so I definitely recommend starting to get help with your issues. You know, instead of just letting this podcast be the only thing that you listen to, you know, I think I recommend, you know, starting to reach out to another person and one of the things that I found helpful was confession confessing of the wrongs that I've done confessing of problems that I've been in confessing that you know I just can't do it now the Bible mentions you know um, confession of our sins But I also look at confession as, you know, just talking about what you're dealing with. Because, you know, one of the things that I notice about, you know, evil and sin, especially, you know, if it's done to you, is that, you know, we can become silent. And, you know, we can refuse to get help with our problems and you know I take the view that a lot of things happen in secret and so because a lot of things happen in secret you know it's not you know I can explain that a little bit more it's like it's not so evident you know growing up in the world it's not so evident all the time to necessarily see that how how sinful the world is now i think everyone you know sees sin at some point in their life you know right but i'm i'm just saying that it's not always so in your face that the world is against god you know I think it's becoming more prevalent these days, you know, that's why, you know, I make videos like we are in the end times and, you know, it's the time of the end and, you know, all these different things. But, you know, when you go to the grocery store, when you maybe go to, you know, uh, a business or something and, 
you know, you're hanging out with friends. It's not so obvious. And especially if you don't have any knowledge of God, you know, it's not so obvious that, you know, the world is so sinful. But as you start to, you know, spend more time in this earth, you start to hear and you start to see more and more sin. But going back to the secret thing, you know, is that you can keep a lot of things in inside. And, you know, let's say someone punched you or something. You know, you're not going to necessarily tell someone right away. And I think that goes along with bigger sins is that, you know, you're not going to necessarily tell someone right away what you've gone through. And so to me, as much as you can, I think one of the answers is opening up and letting someone know what you've gone through. And I don't think you should just let anybody know. I think one, you should let someone know who, depending on what it is, who is of the same sex, you know, um, if you're a woman, you know, I highly recommend going to a woman, a woman pastor or a woman counselor. You know, I don't necessarily recommend going to a man if you're a woman, unless you really have no one else to go to and you really trust, have trust, well, in God, but also you trust this person on some level. But if you're a man, go to a man and, you know, you can really open up about some of the things that you have gone through. I think one of the flip sides of everyone being sinners is that someone can relate to you, you know, and offer you help. You know, it's not that, you know, oh, you're the only one. No, we've all gone through something terrible. And, you know, as we live life, we hope to avoid more things. And I think one of the ways to avoid is to become more godly, to become more righteous, to become closer to God, to love God. And I think that's what makes the Christian life so challenging is because that type of behavior goes against, you know, what we kind of are prone to. And, you know, after I make this video, you know, after I make this podcast, you know, I still have the challenge of, you know, okay, I have to live out the Bible myself you know, and I can't just be someone that's telling someone to do something. You know, I also have to, you know, love God and keep his commandments. And, you know, I, as I do those things, I realize, wow, you know, it's not so easy to do something that has such a simple concept of understanding, which is, you know, something like being kind to others or putting your faith in Jesus Christ or believing in God, you know, it seems so simple, but yet, you know, it has a challenge to it because of how we have fallen because of the sin in the garden when Adam and Eve ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, I will give you another resource, you know, um, I recommend Cornerstone Fellowship Church uh, in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, uh, Pat, the pastor's name is Alan Nolan. I've seen a lot of his videos. You know, I, I pretty much, you know, I can vouch for just the, uh, solidness of his teachings. And so I would recommend his videos. I also recommend, um, Bob Yandian, um, even though he's more on the grace side, 
which is heavy heavy on grace which i like grace i'm heavy on grace too but at the same time you know you know there are certain teachers who are going to teach in a different way in a different perspective of the bible but you know one of the things that bob yanian says is that you know don't throw away your relationship with god because of something that you've gone through and he says that you know don't throw away what you know for what you don't know so you know he gave a story of a woman who was going to bible college with her dad but one day her dad was walking down the street and he got hit by a stray bullet and he was laying in the hospital but he ended up dying and so the woman woman's you know her dad just died and she was fighting you know the battle between continuing to be a Christian and continuing to believe in God and so one of the things that you know I think is true of what he was saying was that you know because we don't get an answer to some things it doesn't mean we should throw away what we do have answers to which is the word of god which are the answers answers from the bible and yeah you know i don't think it's so easy sometimes to just continue you know, in goodness and, you know, especially if you're tempted to maybe do something like, oh, you want to go get drunk or, you know, you're going to want to go, you know, give into that temptation, you know. It's not always easy because maybe you feel mad, maybe you feel anger. And I recommend, I highly recommend getting an anger management, either book or taking a class on anger management. Because, you know, I think sometimes anger, you know, like the Bible says, it leads to the devil tempting us to act impulsively, act irrationally, and to sort of uh, mess up our life, you know, in different ways. And so I recommend, you know, if you're dealing with anger, to get some help with that. Because there's also passive aggressive anger, which, you know, you're angry, but you don't show it. You know, you may have thoughts that are angry, but it's kind of dormant in your life until one day you just blow up. And so, um, you know, I think sometimes some situations do make us angry. But one thing that the Bible tells us about Jesus is that, you know, he was looking ahead to pass the cross to what he was going to accomplish and the reward that God would give him because of what he would do. And, you know, Jesus didn't have to suffer, but he chose to suffer in order to pay for our sins. Otherwise, we would all be dead. We would all eventually perish because we would, you know, because Adam and Eve sinned, you know, our parents, it's like, you know, our parents sinned. And so God cursed their whole family line. And you know, without any savior, it's not only that Jesus is paying for our sins and say, Hey, you know, I'll take the payment, you know, I'll, I'll cover them. So, you know, no, he's also changing us, you know, to become like him. And that's the other part of being a Christian is that you know, Jesus is not only saying that, hey, I'll pay for your sins, but he's saying, you know, I'll offer you a way out so you don't have to continue to sin and continue to rack up, you know, payment against God. And, 
you know, rack up your sins. And so, um, you know, Jesus was looking ahead to what was ahead of him. And so what does that apply to us? That means that we have to look ahead towards heaven, towards, you know, the new Jerusalem, towards the time period where God takes away sorrow. He, He does away with sin and evil and death. And suffering. And we have to look forward ahead towards where we're headed to if we, you know, uh, follow Jesus Christ in the right way. That's what we're headed to. But for those that don't follow Jesus Christ, especially in the right way, there is pain there is suffering suffering there is tribulation that's what the book of romans talks about he says that there's tribulation and anguish for every soul of man who does evil and you see the thing about it is we have all done evil and if we don't turn to jesus christ we will continue to do evil and that means that we will continue to have tribulation pain and suffering but the book of romans also says that there is good to all those who continue to do good there will be glory honor and immortality to every soul of man who does what is good you know and Uh, Obviously, I'm not quoting that verse word for word, but if you read the book of Romans, you'll see what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, there's probably so much more that I probably could have said, but, um, you know, um, I have made other videos on this and, um, So anyway, you can check out more videos on my channel. Hey, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I will try to make more videos about this topic. Um, But don't let this be the only podcast that you watch. Do more research on this. Um, Maybe even getting a book on suffering. And you can learn about what others have done in their greatest, darkest moments. And um, how God brought them through. So, really, God is our only source of life here. And he doesn't want us to have life in any other source. And there's more to come, you know. There's more to be had from life. But we have to realize that the source is God. And that, apart from God, that's where you hear all these different stories of these tragedies and people become bitter and angry people and mean and sinful apart from God, you know. And the book of Proverbs says uh, the way of the righteous gets brighter and brighter until the perfect day. And, and so, you know, our life does get better if you follow Jesus Christ. Now, um, you know, I think God does repay us for the wrongs that we have gone through but also you know he will wipe away every tear from our eye you know to me what that means is that you know anything bad that you've gone through you know God's going to wipe away not only I think it can reference the remembrance of it, but also he's going to make it right. He's going to make it right where you no longer feel like, you know, you have to shed a tear about it. So anyway, you can check out my website. It's in the channel description. Uh, It's in not this description of this video, but it's in. If you go to my channel page, you'll see the website at the bottom. But thanks so much, and I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.